Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to unfortunately the, let's say, second version of the first episode of this alternate campaign with France. Now you may be wondering why did I record again, did I start again everything from scratch? Well the answer is easy and it's only one. Um, when I, let's say, kept progressing in my old campaign I realized too late that at the beginning of that campaign I did, uh, let's say, at least two big mistakes. First of all, I, for whatever reason, I decided to uh, train my navy to get enough naval, naval experience uh, with which to generate and create the, the new model of the uh, French aircraft carriers. And this meant that I had to sacrifice a lot of civilian factories for uh, trading oil with the United States. And all those civilian factories that I spent for three years in just trading for oil were all factories that I could have not used for the, let's say, civilian buildup of France prior to the war. And as a consequence of this, my, first of all, my uh, not, not, not only I had a low, lower amount of factories that, that I expected to get, and besides the, this, you know, influencing all my military production, but second, I, uh, I mean, this uh, oil thing and, and navy training uh, somehow distracted me from the the essence of Koi Four, which is in Black Eyes the land army, the the territorial army, the divisions. I didn't have enough divisions, and to make things even worse, I didn't have manpower. I really had zero manpower left uh, in September of 1939. So <laughs> I was like, holy crap. And yeah, I mean, I realized too late, okay, maybe I should increase the conscription laws, even though I did it. Um, this was really too late. And by the time uh, that uh, by the time the German AI just advanced through the Netherlands and Belgium, I realized too late that the AI pierced the Maginot Line with two Panzers and twelve infantry divisions. It was ugly to see this bulge popping up into the, the French territory, and yeah. I did again one big mistake, which was to counterattack, you know, against a level 10 or 12 fort, which was just a suicide because since my troops got um, disorganized, heavily um, disorganized, I, you know, the, the, the Germans then just broke through my thin crust around this bulge, and then it was just game over for me. <laughs> and yeah, besides this, um, as, as, as I mentioned before, my uh, lack of civilian factories also delayed the construction of military factories and having less military factories meant I had less equipment produced in the field. And besides the fact that I wasted a lot of military factories in expanding my air force, uh, and that's why, I don't know if you saw it at the beginning, I just completely disbanded almost all of my air wings, I just kept the interceptor, the fighters and the close air support. Uh, yeah, the, the, the cast wings. I didn't have enough equipment. So even though I put uh, in, I think in 1939, at the beginning of 19, 1939, um, six more garrison divisions, those divisions never made it to the field because I didn't have enough equipment because I, I was stupid and I traded for oil. And so this is actually, this was very amazing to see how one decision that you pick at the beginning of the game can really trigger like uh, an avalanche of, of, of effects downstream and uh, honestly I, I mean it's a shame that I already deleted this episode but yeah it would have been really nice to upload it and comment it and go through all the mistakes made so yeah guys even in case you ever play France and you want to hold um, all your lines uh, just don't train the Navy uh, I don't know if it was worth even to, to, to disband it but yeah, I don't know. And yeah, I mean, I talked about this and yeah, I mean, that's basically why I had to um, start over. So, 
the, the few things that changed, let's say, at the beginning of this campaign were um, disbanding most of my air, wing, uh, air wings, no more navy training, and just focus on the French army. And this kind of helped because already in uh, in August of 19, yeah, between July and August of 1936, I could already deploy my very first six extra uh, garrison divisions. True, I had no manpower, but uh, yeah, I think this was kind of glitched because I kept firing the decision to send volunteers to Spain, which would have removed a thousand manpower you need from my map, from my pool. Um, but the problem being that I didn't have enough, I didn't have manpower at all in, in my pool. So uh, I think this should be reworked in the um, uh, event, in the uh, decisions uh, triggers, because this is yeah it was not really what I was hoping to get. I mean, okay, this was kind of exploiting some bugs of the mod, but I, mean, I hope you guys will understand that France is not an easy nation, especially if, if you play on the hardest. Um, Difficulties, and also I have to mention research-wise. Um, as France, I would definitely recommend researching the housing technologies because uh, the housing technologies, at least from level two, they will uh, increase by ten percent, by zero point one percent each, the amount of recruitable population that, that you can get. And yeah, besides the fact that in this campaign I got twice the event to mobilize my uh, economy, which resulted in actually mobilizing even too much, getting ready the partial mobilization in 1936, and then I had to spend I think, 50, polit 50 points of political power to just remove this uh, law because it was too much, apparently. Um, yeah, in in, uh, in 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 this campaign, I as always decided to send um, volunteers to uh, the Republicans uh, in Spain, having also fixed uh, the famous, I would say, broken um, focus tree, which allows you to send volunteers. Yes, but it doesn't allow you to send them because you, you and Spain do not have the same uh, ideology and. I found also interesting, uh, <clears throat> let's say, the, the fact that even with the Republicans having sent, uh, this time, surprisingly, a group of four, I think that was because I had enough divisions in the field to send four um, extra uh, units as volunteers this time, unlike my previous attempt. Uh, let's say, having sent four divisions of motorized troops, um, again, really helped me in speeding up the collapse of the, of the nationalist style. And, I mean, given the, let's say, the, the shape of the front line, the, the most, I would say, appealing target for me was just to march across Spain and cut off the nationalists into two. And the idea was to separate the southern port, the southern front, of the nationalists from the north, where they had the capital, to just, you know, the, the usual strategy. Cut off, divide, uh, surround, shrink, and circle, and then just annihilate the enemy divisions. And yeah, I mean, it was kind of funny because I was actually carrying on all the... I was doing all, the, all of the heavy lifting, as always, when you want to uh, fight in Spain. And... Maybe because I had four divisions, multiple divisions. Um, yeah, I mean, once I broke through the very first line of defense, the AI had no reserves in the, in the second line, and it was just really just n not even a walkover. It was like you know the the tour of Spain with my motorized troops. They they just rushed towards the two ports, I think Sevilla and Malaga in the south of Spain, because this completely deprived the nationalist forces uh, in uh, Andalusia and in, in the other uh, regions of south southern Spain from every mean of supplies. And you know, uh, you, by now, if you follow my channel, you should know that once you achieve a complete encirclement and you, you deprive the enemy of their supplies, it is just a matter of time. 
uh, before they will just um, capitulate and surrender. I must note, I, I must say, I noticed that the AI did manage to recapture the port of Sevilla, and I, I actually freaked out when I saw that. I was like, oh my god, now the, the troops are getting supplied again. But luckily, the militia division which uh, recaptured Sevilla was so badly organized that in a matter of, I think, five or six in game hours, the division was kicked out of, of Sevilla. The port was recaptured, and then, as you may have just witnessed, the whole southern front of the nationalists collapsed under the sheer weight of my motorized vehicles. And for this episode, I decided just to end it here because I, I didn't know uh, how long the, the video was what it was getting. So I said, okay, let's just stop it here. Let's just grab some uh, bridge heads. Uh, north but then since again i noticed that my troops were advancing really fast and faster than, than my expectations i said okay let's just push north let's just reach the that river that you see there and yeah let's just force the nationalists to dig in on the other side while again we try to eliminate and shrink the enemy army uh by surrounding and pocketing and wiping the enemy troops out and yeah i think that's that's all for this episode guys thank you very much for watching thank you very much for supporting my channel and as always take care and stay tuned for the next episode